Right, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the potential biggest solar panel farm that's going to be going up in Australia in 2027 and asking ourselves, are solar panels really worth it for the average citizen? And guys, let me just tell you, there's a lot of propaganda about solar panels. I would say for the average everyday person... It's a complete sunken cost because it takes around six years. If you get an actual setup that costs four or five thousand dollars, it takes roughly six years depending on where you're located. But if you're in really anywhere in the United States outside of Hawaii or Arizona, solar panels just simply are not worth it. If you've got five or six thousand dollars, you're better off investing that somewhere than waiting six years to actually get a return in terms of overall, uh, you know, free electricity and things like that. But when it comes to governments, the number one solar panel farm right now, it's no surprise if you've been paying attention to how the world works and who the actual number one concern for America is, of course, China far and away has the best solar panel production right now. Now, why would it make sense for a government to invest into solar panels? Well, if you actually look at it, China has a long-term 2050 plan to where these solar panels, it's a lot up front in terms of total cost, but after 20 or 30 years, you're really going to start reaping significant benefits. It's very similar to cryptocurrency mining, I remember back in 2017 or 2018, the big thing was, oh, you need to start mining cryptocurrency. You would get these companies come on the market and they'd say, all you have to do is buy this, hook it up, and, and you'll be making money. Meanwhile, the thing costs $300 just to buy and it gives you like $4 worth of Ethereum every month. Uh, so it's a complete waste of money. But if you scale it, buy a ton of it for a lower cost, which is what China's done, uh, you can really in 2035, in 2040, in 2045, rape the rewards. The important thing for the United States is normally we are ahead of other countries in, in terms of our technological advances. What about solar panels in space? That is where the United States is going to have to win. And if we do win there, we will win the battle of this type of energy because solar panels in space completely blow out any solar panels located on the ground. Uh, you know, you get 24 hours of sunlight. They're closer to the sun, so they become more powerful. I'm going to go through everything, but let's go over the current biggest solar panel farm in the world. It is the Glow Mud Solar Park in China. It's a hugely impressive site with nearly 7 million solar panels all working to deliver energy to China. And it also says China has big plans with this solar park. They're hoping to reach 16 gigawatts within the next 5 to 6 years. To put that into context, a single gigawatt could power 1 million UK homes for an hour or around 100 million LED light bulbs. And there you can take a look at the overall top five uh, solar parks in the world. You've got China at number one, India at two and three. India gets a ton of sun, that doesn't surprise me. United Arab Emirates at number four and then Egypt at number five. And then taking a look at solar energy stats by country, China at number one by a mile, United States at number two, Japan sitting at number three. If you look at it per capita, Germany is number one. Uh, per capita, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but in terms of this context, it really does not matter at all. We're just talking about overall raw numbers per capita really uh, doesn't mean anything. You could get like uh, one of the very small countries that has is number one in per capita, but it doesn't mean it produces much of anything. It's just a very small country. Let's get to the Australia Asia power link. It is a proposed electricity infrastructure project that is planned to include the world's largest solar plant, the world's largest battery and the world's longest submarine power cable, a solar farm in Northern Territory of Australia, will produce up to 20 gigawatts of electricity, most of which will be exported to Singapore and later to Indonesia. The AA Power Link has been developed by an Australian company, Sun Cable. 
It was projected to begin construction in mid-2023 with operations starting in early 2026 and it will be officially completed by 2027. This is the biggest solar panel mega project in the history of the world right now and it's expected to cost around $35 billion dollars. Uh, the overall design of it, the solar panels, would be in the Northern Territory near Elliott, Australia. And the panels will cover around 30,000 acres in area. I mean, and there's renderings of this and it just looks like never-ending solar panels. Imagine if you took all those solar panels, you connected all of them to a central energy source and then you char you tried to like charge your iPhone. I actually don't think you can charge your iPhone directly with solar panels. I believe I read somewhere that it would short circuit. There would be an energy surge or something of that nature, but there it is. There is the link from the Northern Territory of Australia to Singapore. Uh, this is just a crazy amount of energy involved into this. And again, when you're talking about solar energy, it really is an investment uh, for the future. The question for a lot of these countries, how long does it take someone to develop technology to where it becomes more profitable to send solar panels up into space? And that's kind of the next thing I want to talk about. Space-powered solar panels can generate 2,000 gigawatts of power continuously because there is no nighttime in space. If you point them right at the sun, it is constant. It's never ending. That is such a major advantage, let alone putting them up there and putting them closer to the sun. So it's more energy for the solar panels as well. 40 times more energy than a solar panel would generate on earth annually. Uh, so this actually, you know, would be a big thing, especially for the United States, who isn't located in the best of spots. Uh, you know, you would have to either get your solar energy from another country. Uh, when you're talking about where's the best place in the U.S., I'm guessing somewhere in Arizona. I have not done research on that, but I would imagine Arizona gets the most sun hours out of anyone. Hawaii, I, I, I would not. I would probably say no, and, and it would be hard with Hawaii being so far away from the 48 that are landlocked. But yeah, there are some renderings from space, and this is probably what the United States is going to have to do. This is the next big thing. China has already gone in so far with these solar panels and these farms. They're so far ahead in terms of uh, solar energy, and it's only going to get better for them because, again, it's an investment. It costs money to put all the panels up, get it working. After a while, they will start making money. So it, from a government perspective, yes, that is a good idea. The question is, how long does this technology uh, take to get developed to where it becomes more profitable to spend all your money on some type of device that can be sent up with solar panels attached to it, let it orbit, and it makes it, it just gets you so much more energy through some type of connection uh, with technology that we don't yet really have. But hopefully we're developing, I'm sure governments are looking into that, uh, and, and that becomes a lot easier for the United States to get their solar energy faster, uh, and and much more potent because it's a constant 24-hour continuous loop. The sun never goes down if you're pointing it directly at, uh, you know, in the correct angle. So right now there is this race. How do we produce clean energy? Who produces most of it? Does Australia become a facilitator for the majority of Asia in, in terms of them getting ton of, a ton of sun hours, things like that? And then, of course, this does tie back to the idea of global warming. Now, when it comes to global warming, on a consumer, everyday American level, you should not worry about global warming at all. It is the most ridiculous thing. And we've actually seen certain policies get talked about to where it's like, oh, no, it makes complete sense why they would scare citizens about, about global warming. They want them all in electric cars, controllable vehicles. Why would I pay more for an electric car? Oh, because it's controlled and it's going to get to the point and I'm not going to I'm not going to go off on this video on a tangent, but what's going to end up happening is 
we all, the idea for the citizen, the everyday citizen for the United States, the question in 2030, do you value personal freedom or public safety? That's a question when it comes to guns. That's a question when it comes to being able to drive your own car. Or do we let robots take over all of our cars that can be circumvented and immediately stopped by the government or just completely controlled by the government? Because the argument is there's X number of X accidents because a human, you know, drinking and driving, doing super stupid stuff. You want to eliminate the accidents. How do you eliminate accidents? You give up freedom. And what is giving up freedom? It's giving up your right to drive wherever you want. Tomorrow I could drive theoretically to North Dakota, uh, but if I have you know a programmed car, I mean I guess I could do that, or the you know someone could stop me, or maybe I've said some bad things. It's it's a slippery slope. I'm not going to get into all that. This is about solar panels and solar energy. The next big thing is putting them in space, finding an efficient way to get the energy from them from space to you know on the ground and be able to use that and convert it that's going to be that's probably a trillion dollar idea right there whenever that gets developed probably in the 2030s or 2040s and China of course is doing this you've got Australia saying listen let's take advantage of our location geographically on the earth we get a ton of sun If other countries are investing billions of dollars into it, let's use us as a facilitator and export our natural energy to other countries and and make them pay for it and really power most of Asia with this massive solar farm that apparently is 30,000 acres. It is absolutely crazy if this happens in 2027. But either way, guys, I just wanted to talk about what's going on with solar panels, things like that. Uh, Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.